Welcome back. Now, in the first quarter of this year, South Africa's agricultural trade surplus shot up 20%. This despite port issues, and as we await the appointment of new ministers, post President Amaposa's inauguration and former Minister of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development, Togat Didiza's appointment as National Speaker, what will the new minister have to prioritize for continued growth in that sector? Wandile Slobo, who is a Chief Economist of the Agricultural Business Chamber of South Africa, joins us with his thoughts. Wandile, all Always a pleasure and a good afternoon to you. Uh, good afternoon, Notado. Thanks for having me on. I think it's important on that point that you just are starting off mm. with to say, yes, uh, South Africa's agricultural trade surplus showed up, uh, but that also shows us uh, the payoff of all of the efforts that has been put in place by business, organized agriculture and transnet of saying, let's try to get our ports uh, uh, to work uh, together because that trade surplus is really a function of a 6% uh, improvement in our agricultural exports, having reached about $3.1 billion in the first quarter. And of course, a marginal decline uh, on the imports. But I think in a way, uh, this is really uh, reflects that activity there because it's not just even a value uh, question, but also the volumes in the start of this year uh, have actually been good uh, on, the, on the agricultural exports front. I love that. I love that we are reflecting because I really wanted to also, uh, you know, do that. Spend some time really reflecting on some of uh, the developments and milestones reached by the sector. Of course, there have been setbacks, so there are always setbacks. But South Africa's agricultural sector actually remains one of the most promising parts uh, of our economy. Uh, and we're seeing this now with, of course, what we've just spoken about in terms of exports. But I think even just a resilience uh, there. I want to speak about some of those gains uh, there, uh, Wandile. I think the sector on its own, uh, it, it's an important one because, I mean, uh, you take a step back and you look at it in pro uh, its proportion in the South African economy. Primary agriculture, yes, 2.5 of the GDP. But when you begin to account for the value chain, that takes us somewhere around about 9% of the overall economy in South Africa. And a lot more gains that are also in employment because an argument can be made to say agro-processing and primary agriculture jobs are just north of 1.3 uh, million South Africans that are there, which also, again, it's another roughly 9% or so of the overall employment. But I think the long-term gain that is also important is if one take a step back and say 1994 to today, how has the sector performed? It has more than doubled in value and in volume terms. So we have been seeing uh, some good improvement over time, although there are years where we will struggle with droughts and animal diseases and all of those things. But I think that in reflecting on the sector three decades on in democracy, it is one of the sectors that has performed uh, reasonably well. And of course, right now, the, some of the key challenges that are on our table is the story of the logistics, which now we're starting to see this collaboration is paying off. The logistics stuff is very important because South Africa's agriculture now exports over half of what we produce in value terms. So we just discussed now the quarter one uh, figures the exports 2024. But if you were to go back to 2023, we saw record exports of about $13.2 billion, which again was this excellent improvement. Then if now then we are export dependent, it does mean then we have to pay a lot of attention on the logistics. In addition to that, there's a challenge of animal diseases that we see in South Africa and elsewhere in the world. And I think we have to pay more attention on that because in that agricultural economy, half of it is livestock and poultry exposed to these animal diseases. So the Department of Agriculture, sector stakeholders, they all have to be paying a lot of attention. I think the new administration and new minister of agriculture will have to devote a lot of energy on that area. So these are some of the aspects that we're talking about. But I think in the policy side of agriculture, we don't really need new introduction uh, of that. We have what we call in the sector, the agriculture and agro-processing master plan. And I think if it can be implemented with relentless focus, by the private sector, the Department of Agriculture, and many other stakeholders that had sat on the table when we were co-creating that plan, uh, that could move the sector forward and it could begin to accelerate the gains in unemployment that we as a country, all of us, so badly need. 
Uh, I really uh, love that we've spoken about the issue also uh, of, uh, you know, having a doer come in here because an important one, I think, that forms part of this portfolio but also forms a part of agriculture as a whole is the issue of land reform. Uh, Wandila, I want to speak about that, how it does play into, uh, you know, the gains made by the agricultural sector and even the potential that lies ahead for it. The fundamental discussion that many South Africans always say is that land reform has been a complete failure in South Africa. People have written books about this thing, but that argument um, has a, a fault on it because it's premised on this figure where people say uh, so far since 1994, black South Africans still own about 9% of, of the of their agricultural land. But when we look at the numbers and taking land reform on its totality in South Africa with all of of its levers on restitution, redistribution, tenure, and many various programs that the Department of Agriculture has put in place 1994 to today, as well as the private transactions by Black South Africans, we come up to a figure that is around about uh, at 25%, not the 10%. 10% is actually only the redistribution part, which ignores all of the other progress that had been made um, in the sector. So there is that which needs to be corrected in this African um, uh, conversation. But of course, then the question begins to say, if then the land reform is at 25%, as I'm saying, uh, are we seeing those gains in agricultural production? But when it comes to production, it is true that Black South Africans, in that progress that I was saying more than doubled 1994 to today of the sector's value and volume, at a commercial level, Black South Africans still make up about 10% of that. But the question then there is on the fact that the Department of Agriculture, in some of the land that they have procured, that they have procured over time, they have not transferred it with title deeds. Um, and that's something that now they need to continue to do. In fact, Minister Titiza, in her last six months in that portfolio, she began uh, dishing out the title deed to some of the land that is owned by the state. This is land that was just under 3 million hectares. And she dished out close to a half a million hectares in a short period of time. Now, I think the new minister in the new administration should begin releasing that land with title deeds to carefully selected beneficiaries. And that needs to be paired with blended finance, which the land bank and the others are running. And of course, the training collaboration with commodity associations. That is important because if that is done appropriately, in our view, we think that it could add to plus to 30% improvement in the gross value added of agricultural sector. And there could be jobs gains um, on top of that. And this brings us back then to the importance of logistics because any output in improvement will have to be devoted in part to the export markets. And I think the logistics are an important part of that. So in essence, on land reform, we have to continue to release the land that is in government books, but that is not going to be the end all of land reform. The South African government has to continue with land reform through the redistribution, restitution, and strengthening of tenure, which are the programs that are on the table, and be more effective uh, on that in addition to the release of the land that they have. But I think that needs to also be underscored by the necessary improvement in municipalities in South Africa, in maintaining roads, in service because these farms and these agribusinesses are operating in these municipalities that for the last part of the past 10 years, they've actually been a complete failure in many provinces. And I do think that that improvement is necessary because these farmers, they may produce if the roads are not in good condition, that increases the transaction cost of delivering a product to market. And of course, then it affects their profitability as well as their sustainability in their business. And it creates these fragmented value chains. These are all things that the new administration needs to begin thinking about. Well, Wandila, we'll give it 100 days after that appointment and be in touch to reflect on what we're hearing and seeing. Thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure having you today. That was Andy Lestrobo. He's Chief Economist of the Agricultural Business Chamber of South Africa.